Greetings, fellow Earthlings and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune 215. And right now we're in the state of New York. We're currently in the city of the Bronx. We're gonna be doing a walking tour of the Bronx, one of the boroughs of New York City. It's about 67 degrees outside right now. It's not too much sun out. It's a gray sky type of day. We have a beautiful dog in front of us, beautiful brown dog. Looks like we're exiting a residential neighborhood. They got a subway up the block, so I'm gonna walk under the train. It's like the, the L. Love your dog, bro. Thank you. Uh-oh, uh-oh. No. Was it a boy or girl? Boy. <laughs> Have a good day, man. The dog came to me and smelled me. <laughs> that was cool. Nice chocolate cover. The color reminded me of, um, of my dog that passed away, named Brownie. Typical name, right? We're at 165th. East 165th and Kelly. We're passing Iglesia Unidos on our right. You can hear the train going by. That's their train station. It's green. So we're approaching Westchester. I see Lily's Deli Grocery on our right hand side. We're at the intersection of Kelly Street and Westchester Avenue. Now traffic over here, traffic over here is different. It'd be gridlock. I'm talking about stuck at a standstill. I think I'm gonna make this right hand turn. I'm just gonna randomly make a turn and I don't have no specific set point of destination. I just want to walk, explore the area. We had a little rim shop called Apollo Tires on our right. Looks like we got a little scooter shop right here on my left. Interval Ave Station on our left hand side. Interval Ave. We got a Chinese restaurant on our right hand side. We're at Interval. I think I'm across here. Just cause I believe we're close to the Big Pun mural. I wanna show y'all that. If you haven't got a chance to check out my driving tour, make sure you check that out. I did a driving tour of the Bronx area. I wasn't able to cover that much square miles, but I was able to cover a lot more than I am walking. So we're gonna go take a look at that. Cause during the driving, when I try to show y'all, what the big pun mural looked like, but it was off screen. So maybe since we're on foot, we can start out with that.
We got jackpot deals on my left. We have a white castle across the street. Got a UPS delivery driver making deliveries. So I'm gonna make this left hand turn. And if I'm correct, yep, we're here next to the mural. Legendary Christopher Rios. He got on the Jesus piece, and then they got some candles out there for him. Terror Squad. effect. Ew, my man turned in the corner with it. Yeah, he was chilling. Yeah, he was chilling on that John. Notice the fire escapes they got here. These are apartment buildings. I'm sure L and I requires the fire escapes in case of an emergency you're able to get out of the building public school 33x the longwood academy of discovery community i'm assuming it's one of the schools in the area Yeah, so the Bronx is predominantly a Hispanic borough. I believe it's over 55%, roughly around there, of Hispanic descent. We got a park across the street. I'm going across the street so we can take a look at this park. We're approaching Dawson. We're on Rogers Place in Dawson. They gave that BMW a ticket. The greatest story ever told started in the Bronx. How are you going to finish it? Wow. Or it really says, how are you going to finish it? But I didn't pronounce it like that. Dawson Playground. Jamaica Plus Grill. Looks like that uh, bus was used for food services. We're at Dawson Street. United Hispanic Construction Workers. 
United we stand. We got another park across the street. We got Los Bancos Deli, Deli and Grocery. Los Bancos. We're on Reverend James Polite Avenue. The intersection of Reverend James Polite and Dawson. We're approaching Longwood Avenue. Got a bunch of graffiti right here on this electric box. We got what looks to be like a set of row homes on my right hand side. We got a girl coming up with some blue hair. Blue and like a green fade to blue. This is one of their parks. All right, we're approaching Kelly. Kelly and Longwood. I love your dog, man. She had one of those popcorn dogs, but the dog's hair was shaved. I call them the popcorn dogs, but I don't know the actual term. It's the dog that got like the really curly hair. Kind of looks like Kentucky Fried Chicken. As a matter of fact, I, that, I think that's the correct term I'll be using. I'll be using the Kentucky Fried Chicken dog. <laughs> Usually has really curly hair, but it looked like she had her jaw shaved down low. You hear the music playing. You got tons of ambience. A lot of scooters. Look at those two people in the corner about to crash. <laughs> yeah, two scooters about to bang out. We're at Longwood. Yeah. Energy everywhere. You can feel the energy. Energy everywhere. It's like a lot of uh, activity. A lot of businesses. This is the Police Athletic League. All right, we're at Longwood Ave and Fox Street. Approaching Fox Street. We got Barreto or Barreto Pharmacy on our left. We got some kids that look like they just got out of school. They're running across the street, chasing each other. That's probably their uniform. It's like a royal blue uh, sweatpant and a t-shirt. We got another scooter dude on my right.
All right, we're approaching Southern Boulevard. Southern Boulevard. We got the BX46 bus stop right here. I think I'm gonna cross. I'm gonna cross Longwood Ave. A lot of horn beeping, right? Yeah, the driving tour I did over here was vicious because everybody was out. <laughs> everybody was trying to go. Yo, and it's the middle of the day. It ain't even rush hour yet. Then again, I think every day 24 seven in New York is rush hour. <laughs> Yo. They was savage, it was vicious, relentless. Like you'll be at a red light or there'll be like several cars in front of you and they still beeping at you to move. Like, bro, it's a red light. Auto repair center, muffler shop, flat fix, Dunkin' Donuts. I smell some food. And I think on the right hand side, we're passing a uh, project building. There's several of them that was in the area. We got a mobile gas station on our left hand side. They got regular gas for four dollars and seventy five cents per gallon. We're approaching East 156 and Southern Boulevard. A bunch of graffiti over there on that building. Tons and tons of throw ups. We're passing Fox Park. It's Fox Park. You even got graffiti right there on top of that billboard. You see that billboard? Somebody climbed up there. It looked like three different people climbed up there to put their hand up there. We got some smart cars right here. We got the first gen and the second gen. This is when they began converting them to all electric. This is gasoline and it's convertible. Yeah, I like the convertibles. Put a nice system in that thing. Good gas mileage and you straight. Especially with parking like this. Oh man, you definitely need a smart car. Either that, or like I said, bicycle, scooter, Something where you can finesse your way through traffic. Punch buggy, no punch back. Punch whoever next to you. Your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, your niece, your nephew. Remember that? Volkswagen Beetle.
there's a laundry business across the street, a laundry center. And we got another smart car right here. That's a hard top. First generation hard top. Oh, I see another two smart, three smart cars across the street. Four smart cars, five smart cars. Oh, six smart cars, seven smart cars. Yo, there's a whole smart car club over here. <laughs> oh, snap. Eight, you see that yellow one on the corner behind the cheese bus? Yo, look at that. Oh, another one behind that John. Yo, it's a whole club of smart cars out here in the Bronx. Look at that corner. That's crazy, right? Three over there. Oh, they got one over here with no windshield. Oh, what do they do? They fix them, they repair them or something? That white one. They got a bunch of smart cars. Oh, smart auto. Seen the dude gave us a peace sign? Yeah, that's smart cars all the way down there. Smart auto, so they probably fix them, guys. Yeah, they probably fix them. That's crazy, right? I didn't expect to come here and see so many smart cars. The only other place I've seen that many smart cars at was, we're on Leggett. Leggett and Southern. The only other place that I've seen that many of them at was in San Francisco. San Francisco, there was like, I swear, within the hour that I was driving around for the one tour, it was like probably 30 of them, like 30 different, going all different directions. And it was parked up and everything. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. But right there, it makes sense because they work on the transmissions. So I bet you they make a lot of money off of the transmission repairs because the potholes here are crazy. So a couple good, real hard hits. You're probably going to need to go to the shop. Man, that thing was exaggeratedly loud. It sounds like we got the subway below us, too. Georgia tags. My man delivering some food. What you got? Cupcakes? What's that? Bread? What is that, Pop? Yeah, it looked like a bunch of pastries. Maybe he's delivering pastries or something. We're next to the BX-19 bus stop. <laughs> We're at Southern Boulevard and Ave St. John. Everything is so densely packed here. Everything is extremely dense. We have BB Pizza and Dine on our right, Pizzeria. Wow, somebody had a lot of perfume on. I tasted it. Has anybody ever walked by you or even better, drove by you, the car passed you, and you taste their cologne and you taste the perfume? It'd be so strong. I just tasted whoever just walked by me's cologne. Or it was perfume because it was a feminine smell. That thing was potent. Taqueria truck, tacos. I smell food. I smell Spanish food. Probably because we're walking by restaurants, so they're cooking.
All right, we're walking 149th. So from afar, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to tell, but the direction we're facing at 149th, you'll see some really tall high rises. I believe that probably is Manhattan and or Billionaires Row. On the way over here, I saw like a fabulous, I'm talking about magnificent high rise skyline view. It was dope. What's up? You're a videographer? I'm a cinematographer, yeah. Alright, so like you do it with like the camera? Yeah. Or, like, or you do a hobby? Either way, you know, Nah, I got an official website. I have a degree in film, so I got some high-end stuff. The only thing is I'm not from here, bro. I'm from, from? from Philly. Oh, so, so you, how long have you been out? For a couple hours. I'm just documenting the area before I head back. Damn, man. If if you got a phone, you can check out my YouTube. I'm gonna take your IG and I'm gonna watch your YouTube. All right, so so the IG I got is a different IG. It's not the same name as my as my YouTube, but the IG is uh, you could put beyond. Damn, put um put two two one five. Just save it and screenshot it. Two two one five. T O O N number two one five. So screenshot that. Look that up on YouTube, and that'll bring up my main YouTube channel because I got three YouTube. All right. So I got one that I just do tours. I got one that I do music videos. But just check that out. Once you get to that, and you'll see that main channel, and from there you can link up to the rest of the right, stuff. Dude. Nice meeting, brother. All right, though. Yeah, he asked me if I shoot music videos. I'm like, yeah, but thing is that I'm not from the area, so it's like, you know, I'm not like I'm from the hood, so you could contact me whenever to shoot a music video. I I do have rates, <laughs> out of state rates, and you know I charge for travel and all that, but. I got a couple of music videos lined up when I get back to Philly. People have been trying to link up with me, but I told them that I've been gone. I've been on a hiatus. So far, I've been out for like nine months, so I haven't been able to execute any music videos. But, yeah, with, with the right funds, I'll be here with the right funds. I'm trying to walk over here so I can give y'all a better view of the skyline from afar. Yeah, so I gave him my uh, my YouTube, my main one, because I got three YouTube channels. And he wanted my Instagram, but my Instagram. And again, I got three separate Instagrams. I got the original classic John, but that one, I discontinued it when my, my best friend died in 2018. They got like 17,000 fo followers. Followers don't mean nothing, but they got like 17,000 followers. Then I got the... Um, I got my second drum that I made just for music videos under the new brand, which I haven't really flooded that that much because I was still getting my mind straight after he died in 2018. And then I got the third Instagram, which is dedicated to the behind the scenes of the travel. So if I would have gave him the third drum, he wouldn't have been able to find my YouTube. And yeah, kind of a crazy story, but so tune be chilling. Toonby Chillin' is the uh, latest Instagram. That's where you guys watch the behind the scenes photos from this journey. He asked me if I shoot music videos with just cell phones. He said, do you just shoot videos with cell phones? Nah, I got, you know, over 85 lenses. I got a bunch of equipment, bunch of stuff. I have a degree in film, bro. But the last year since I've been on the road, I haven't really been, you know, I haven't been really soliciting my services. Do I have the skills? Do I have the knowledge? Absolutely. Cinematographer, editor, and director. So you can't even see much of the skyline. The buildings are covering it. But from afar, there's like one or two buildings peeking out. All right, I think we're gonna make a right.
Yeah, when my homie died, that just changed my whole outlook on the music business. If you haven't changed, or, if, or let's just say if you haven't got a chance to hear my story, he was also a filmmaker too. He had a degree in film. He went to Full Sail University in Florida. And I, I got my film degree in Philly. He was born and raised in my area. He lived next door to me my whole life. And um, he was my best friend. And he was supposed to go work on a film in California with one of his college buddies. He had a, a, a ticket to fly back home. He wanted to uh, go to Cali. He was supposed to go to Cali and uh, work on that movie. And unfortunately, when he got out of work, three days before he was supposed to fly, when he got out of work, he was killed by a roommate, somebody that was uh, right in the same place as he was. It was like a private residence that was segmented off into apartments. And the person that was in the room across from him killed him. Then after he killed him, he killed himself. So yeah, I never really received closure from that. He died three days before he was supposed to go work on this movie in California. Crazy, right? Horrible timing. I wish his ticket was four days sooner. You know what I mean? So they would have never got into that dispute which led into him getting gunned down. But when he passed away, it just changed my whole outlook on creating content for a while because he used to hold a camera too. He, me and him worked on a couple projects together. So it was like, it was hard seeing a camera. It's just being in that whole atmosphere when he wasn't around. It felt real awkward for, for like a long time. It felt real awkward. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right, but took me like six several plus months to get my mind together um immediately when he passed away i rebranded myself the day he passed away my old brand which was more popular which i shot over 100 music videos with locally um i just killed that brand i didn't want nothing to do with that brand i felt like a piece of me died when he died so my, my other alias passed away with him then i created the new alias and the new YouTube channel, I shot a handful of videos under the new channel, and then it just still didn't feel right. So I went into different ventures, and I pushed really hard on just other content. And yeah, now I'm here. I've been traveling the country for nine months. Um, I'm blessed, man. I wish he was here with me, because he was a big traveler. He always loved traveling. He always loved traveling. To be honest, he was more into the whole traveling thing than I was back when I was uh, shooting films. I didn't really care about traveling. <laughs> back when I was doing music videos, like I was impressed on it. But he was ready to go. He went to Florida, Cali. Yeah. But, you know, he inspired me to live a little. Live a little and think outside the box. So that's what I did. And as of today, I've been to all 48 states in the United States of America. And I know he was with me each and every step of the way. So that's why when he was asking me about the music video thing, like I kind of, you know, when people ask me about that, it's like, it's hard too, because people expect a lot for a little. <laughs> and then you tell them how much you charge, which my prices are still below the industry standard. My prices are like dirt cheap compared to what you know music videos are supposed to be going for music videos back in the day when the music video business first started back in the day it was like 30 40 grand for a music video because you would have the big budget videos you know 50 60 grand for a music video 100 grand for a music video nowadays since the consumer cameras are so prevalent and so out there everybody is shooting music videos so that then oversaturates the market and then dumps down the price. And then they end up charging two, 300 for a video. So you can't get industry rates anymore. When you're under like a entertainment company or you're under like a label, you can get those industry rates. Even nowadays with the market so saturated, real music video directors, they make anywhere from 10, 15, 20 grand a check. You know what I mean? On the low end, five, six, seven grand a music video. 
You think you tell anybody off the street, I charge five grand for a music video? They gonna take you serious? So, yeah, it's tough. And I and that's not even my rate. My my rates are way below that. Anywhere from 600 for small packages, 800, 1200, 1500, and 2200, depending on whatever package. It all depends on like the amount of locations, the length of the song, the concept, storyline, no storyline. Does it have drone footage? You know, do I need to bring out the generator? You know what I mean? But yeah, that's a little spiel about my little personal cinematography career. But I do have a degree in film, so I'm not just any video guy picking up a camera, shooting videos. You know what I mean? Wait. All right, we're on Concord, 149th in Concord. Yeah, I apologize about the small talk, guys. I know I didn't plan on taking this walking tour and talking about that aspect of my life, but since it was very relevant to what the the homie stopped and asked me, I figured I'd talk to you guys about it. Because you know there's somebody probably brand new. Oh, snap, look at that Superman smart car. See that lime green smart car? I got like a Superman on the hood. Yeah, so it was relevant and it's kind of a, a dark period of my life. And don't get it twisted, I lost a lot of people growing up. I lost a lot of people, a lot of friends, family, cousins, a lot of people, uncles. I carried my one uncle out the house in a body bag when I was 15 years old. So that's a, <laughs> that's a memory that you'll never forget. But um, my best friend hit me the hardest because we was both conscious individuals around the same periods of our lives and we had a lot of the same interests from walking to like the arts to film to the same type of like sports interests and all of that so it was like when he left a piece of me left with him man so I would never be the same but I tried to live for him I try to live for him and try to stay positive and the way that I keep them alive, one of the ways is, when I, you know, under the new music video brand that I had told you that I started, the new music video brand is Beyond the Sky Media. He actually originally uh, came up with the concept and he never like ran through with it. So then I ended up taking over it to keep them alive. Look at that Monte Carlo. That Monte Carlo is beautiful. Look at that thing, super sport. That thing is beautiful. But um, I ended up taking over that brand because, you know, he's beyond the sky now, right? He's no longer here with us. And then in every music video that I shoot, I stamp his WSR, which is his first, middle, and the last initial, Walter Scott Rosebarrow. I stamp that at the end of, the, of every new music video that I shoot under the, the brand. And I created a whole new logo that has an esoteric meaning. Um, many different connections to who he was as a person and what happened to him the new logo that i created is in memory of him you know so that's the little things that i could do to keep his name alive i always said that in the future if i ever or when i do 
achieve greatness to a high degree and people question my background and my story, I was going to keep his name alive. And I'm still going to keep his name alive. That's not going to stop. 20 years from now, you ask me about my story, he's always going to be in my story. It was a piece of me. So as I'm walking out here and I'm dolo, I'm by myself. Today, I don't have the dog. <clears throat> Most of you guys know that usually, look at, I'm a, I'm a bust a full 360. I don't have the dog. Uh, most of you guys know that when I do these walking tours, I tend to walk with Jersey or Philly, you know, because I don't like to leave them in the car. But today I'm Dolo. So I'm out here Dolo with it, walking, enjoying the weather, enjoying the atmosphere, just randomly walking. <laughs> I don't have a sense of direction right now. It almost feels like it's about to start raining. I feel a drizzle. And that'll be a bad move right now. If it starts raining on me, <laughs> the Ashanti song, rain on me. Yo, but um, yeah, man. I think about him a lot. I think about him a lot. When he passed away, I wanted people to look at me and think of him. Most of you guys don't know that I was always incognito. I was always behind the scenes. I was always like low profile. I didn't want to let nobody know what I look like. So those hundred plus music videos that I shot under my original alias, I didn't show my face. I didn't post pictures of me on Instagram. I didn't have no social accounts. My YouTube didn't have any imagery of me. Nobody knew what I looked like. And then with my voice and the way my demeanor is, people thought I was something else. And when they would see me, they'd be like, what? I thought you was an old man or something, you know what I mean? But when he passed away, I began to show my face. That was it. If he would have never passed away, y'all probably wouldn't know what I look like. And I would still be incognito to this day. Because I revealed myself after he passed away. He was never... Um, shy <laughs> he was never afraid to take a photo a selfie not that i was afraid but i liked the whole you know damn this music video hot who shot it this boy yo what he look like i don't know yo you, you know what he look like uh-huh yo you know what he look like uh-huh everybody didn't know what i looked like it was it was cool it was like a almost like um it was like a euphoric feeling there's been a couple times where i've heard people talk about my content with me around and didn't know that i was one that shot it and, you know, you hear, like, genuine reactions. You hear genuine feedback. Because, basically, they didn't know it was you. And it was cool, man. It was, it was, it was cool. It was euphoric sometimes. So I would go meet somebody during a music video set. You know, the client, I would meet with the client, pre-meet with them to lock in the deposit and all that. Get their idea you know brainstorm ideas would not create a conception a concept and they knew what i looked like because they had to meet up with me that's the only time you would get to know what i look like when you were locking the deposit and then i guess they would share my link with the cast who was going to work on it and it was shocked when they would meet me i had a couple people tell me yo i thought you was like a 50 year old white dude or you know i thought you was an old black man or whatever <laughs> and that's what they would tell me they always thought that I was an old person. I'm old at heart, but I'm actually a couple years young, you know what I mean? A cool 34 years young. But, yeah, that's a little bit of my story. We're out here, y'all. We in the Bronx, man. I'm just randomly walking around, randomly walking. I have no sense of direction. The only sense of direction I have is, what's that, the train station over there? Is that the train station or am I walking next to the highway? I think I'm walking next to the highway. We're at 145th, we was at 163rd. So the numbers are descending. So I probably gotta walk backwards. Well, not backwards, but I probably gotta make a right and then go right again. Yeah, 144, so we walked, woo! We walked a good uh, amount back. <laughs> So I gotta walk the opposite way. 
But it was fun. It was fun. Oh, Dale. Oh, snap. That's 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 my youngin, Dale. Dale was from Philly. Did he move here? He actually came out of my graffiti documentary in Philly. He was living in Philly at the time. That's crazy. <laughs> What's crazy is that I also saw another Philly writer when I was in Seattle, Washington, which is the Pacific Coast, the West Co the West Side, you know, uh, Northwestern Side. I saw another artist that I also knew, too. And I think when I was in Miami, I saw another artist that I knew, too, and these were all people from Philly. So I'm guessing probably, like, life led them to, mm -hmm. life led them to move, you know what I mean? It was crazy, though, to see familiar names in these states that I was visiting. Look at graffiti. Yeah, so I got a long walk back. Nice long walk. At least I got a better sense of direction now. I didn't even realize that I was walking in descension rather than ascension. So I'm gonna make this right hand turn on Concord Ave and East 145th. I see a project from afar, one of those tall apartment buildings. You got NYCHA, New York City Housing Authority, public housing. They usually build up because space here in New York is so, is so precious, it's so valuable. You got Jeffrey M. Rappaport School for Career Development Academy Leadership Charter School. in peace they passed away 3 2018 my homie passed away in 2018 too but he didn't pass away on march three is march right yeah january february march now my homie passed away in november november 7th 2018 and we're in 2022 All right, we're approaching 147th and Concord. 147th and Concord Ave. It looks like we're facing the L now. So the L is a good starting point to head back to where I was. <laughs> I'm parked in some random block. Yes, yeah, so like I was saying, normally I walk around with the dogs, but since parking over here sucks. Omi said, look it, I'll just stay and I, and I watch the car. So she's in the car with the keys and both the dogs. Hence why I'm out here dolo. There's a lot of logistics that go into parking and everything. There's a lot of logistics, especially in you know big cities like this. Parking is a hot commodity.
We're at 149th and Concord Ave. We had the NYPD go by. I'm gonna cross. I think I'm gonna go this way because there's a little bit more activity, more ambience, rather than going the opposite way. I'm gonna go straight up towards the train, but that block looked a little bit empty. And I figured I'd go through a nice busy block so you guys can get an idea of the environment. Oh, this is the little, uh, the little Superman John. <laughs> the little Superman John. That's crazy. They got a little Superman smart car. Yeah, so I've been seeing a wide variety of Hispanics. It looks like Mexican, looks like Puerto Ricans, looks like Dominicans. See a couple African American and or Black Americans. I haven't really seen many Caucasian folk just yet. <laughs> They've probably been driving by, but I haven't really been seeing too many of them walking around. It's funny because <laughs> the homie Drew, <laughs> shout out to Drew, a young up and coming YouTuber striving for success. He did a walking tour through here not too long ago. <laughs> and he said, I stand out, bro. He, like, he, he, he tried to make it say, like, he tried to make it seem like, like that people can tell that he's not from around here because he's because he's a caucasian young brother I, I think he's of italian descent i think he's like authentically his folks i think they're i don't know if they're from italy sicily i don't know but he makes some cool youtube content he's a youngster so show him some support yo drew if you're watching you can leave your youtube in the description but i try to explain to him i said bro they don't know if you're Dominican. They don't know if you're Puerto Rican because there be light-skinned Dominicans and there be light-skinned Puerto Ricans. So for all they know, you could be Dominican or you could be Puerto Rican or you could be um like like pit, pit bull, Cuban. You know what I mean? They don't know if you're Spanish. Like I got people that I grew up with in my neighborhood in Philly. They pale as ever. They got straight hair, slick. The way they talk, they talk proper. And people don't know what they are. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, is this block any more entertaining? Nah, that block isn't any more entertaining. I'm just going to keep on walking forward. Probably take this back up to the high numbers. We're looking at 163rd. 163rd is a little walk away. Was this the block that I saw the dude on? I think this was probably the block that I saw the dude on when he wanted my Instagram. I think I crossed the street over there. I don't know, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna find out shortly. I'll be able to tell once I see the skyline. No, I don't think this is it. I don't know, but I think I'm probably better off walking towards the train so I don't lose my sense of orientation. Hold on. Hold on, let me walk in the middle of the street so I can make sure that the train is in front of me. <laughs> I don't want to lose the train. Yeah, yeah, the train is in front of me. It's a couple blocks up, but I think it's in front of me. I'm about to give y'all that extended version. The extendo. <laughs> so no, I'm not gonna give y'all that extended version because I'm gonna run out of space and I'm supposed to be doing another tour. <laughs> I gotta do another tour right after this.
Yeah, I see the train. Bet, I see the train. It's like three blocks, but that's good enough for me. We got a barbershop on our left, Sugar Barbershop. Oh, I feel the rain too. I feel like it's about to start raining, y'all. It's about to start raining. Scooter dude was out. Look at this little tiger, this this little dog, little gangster dog. You gotta watch out for the little ones. The little ones will be the ones that really bite you. Yo, I feel raindrops. It's about to start raining, bro, and I ain't bringing an umbrella. And you know, electronics plus water do not mix. I left the umbrella in the vehicle. I didn't know it was gonna start raining. If I would've knew it was gonna rain, I would've brought the umbrella. All right, 151st, 152nd. I bet we are walking up. I'm glad that I cut because I would have probably ended up somewhere else. So it doesn't seem like it's a perfect grid format. It looks like uh, some blocks are in an angle and they'll take you elsewhere. Yeah, I've been coming to New York since I was a kid. I used to be real into handball. USHA, United States Handball Association. Big blue, not little blue, big blue. In New York, the interesting thing about New York when it comes to handball is that there's over 3,500 courts in New York. In Philadelphia, at the time when I was into it, there was no official courts in New York. We had to play on the side of corner stores, side of buildings. We used to play everywhere. We used to be in the middle of the street. And we had to wait until traffic go by. And we like, for example, like that wall over there, you see that wide open wall? When I was a kid, we would do something like that. It would be like 20 of us on the corner of our block. And we'd be sitting on the sidewalk playing right there on the wall. We would spray paint the lines just like right here. You see how uh, this fire station got lines on the ground? We would spray paint the lines on the ground just like that. And we would play. And I used to come to New York because this is where the professional handball tournaments took place like the you know some of the best of the best handball players were from new york now new york's played all around the world i mean new york handball's played all around the world but in new york there was conveniently placed enough that near every basketball court there was about a dozen handball courts in philly we didn't have that luxury so we played like guerrilla style we was outside playing on the side of buildings all these obstacles had to keep on waiting for cars to go by and all that stuff it wasn't until, I would say, the early 2000s, 2001, 2002, I was involved in a few organizations and whatnot. Shout out to Wally. Wally was one of the best handball players in Philly. And he's also a huge advocate. And Mick Dog. So they both used to take me to here when I was a youngster. They used to pick me up on the weekends. And we used to drive and go to the courts. And, you know, I would take notes and I would play. And um, I got pretty sharp at it. But... I stopped playing it a long time ago. I mean, I'm still sharp, I'm nasty, I'm ambidextrous. I play with both hands, super sharp. But um, yeah, so in the early 2000s, Mig Dog and Wally, the two that I was telling you about that used to pick me up and you know, school me a little bit, they did many fundraisers and they were able to get professional courts built in Philly. So as of today's date in Philly, the first three was on Masher, Masher and Allegheny, well, Master and Allegheny was the first one. After Master and Allegheny, there was Master and Lehigh. Then after Master and Lehigh, there was Master and Burks. So those were the first three professional courts in Philly. If it wasn't for Mick Dog, if it wasn't for Wally, Wally was one of the main pushers. Wally started off as a player and he just got into trying to help see the sport flourish. After those three, Master, Lehigh, Allegheny, and Burks. Most recently, as of like two or three years ago, they just built, uh, probably a little longer, like four or five years ago, they just built some brand new handball course in Hunting Park in Philadelphia. So they got 
uh, again, professional courts, professional walls, professional line, just for handball. So that's dope, you know? But we're still underprivileged compared to the New Yorkers because they got tons and tons and tons of courts. I remember when I would go to the tournaments when I was a kid, I would see down here, I would see Asians, men, women. I would see Caucasians, Italians, all types of pe people. I would see African Americans. I would even see like dreadheads. I would see young people as, you know, they had kid tournaments, 11, 12 year old, 13 year old tour tournaments, 13 and under. Then they would have the 18 to like 13. Then they would have the adult league. The adult league was like all types of ages. Yo, it was crazy. It was like, it was really serious here. The sport over here was like on a whole nother level. The sport over here, it was like every time you go to a court, all the courts was packed. People was playing and it was nasty. It was sharp and women, seeing the women play was crazy. In Philly, we only had like two or three women that played, two or three at the time. I can't speak for today's date. We got Abraham, Stephen Hewitt Public School. But yeah, man, it's crazy. So I've always loved New York. Um, I used to come shopping on Canal Street when I was a kid with my pop. We used to buy wholesale stuff. Um, Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn. Queens. I think I've been to Queens like like once. I haven't really mingled too much in Queens, but um, I always had an opportunity because I live close to New York from Philly. Like North Philly is uh, an hour and forty eight minutes from New York City. But I don't know. It just never intrigued me enough to come and document it. Because when I started this documentation project, I started in my hometown of Philly. I got over five hundred plus tours in Philadelphia alone, walking, driving, all corners of the city over 100 plus neighborhoods. I haven't did a full 100% on the city yet, but I probably got like a high percentage, maybe 75 to 85% of Philly covered virtually. And I did it because it was my city. It, you know, it was connected close to my heart, but they used to invite me to like other places. They'd be like, yo, come here and shoot, come here. It's like, I didn't really care about documenting <laughs> another neighborhood because my virtual mapping project, I held it close to my heart. Cause I wanted my future generations to see where I grew up at. You, you know what I mean? But I'm here now because I've been traveling the country. As I told you earlier, I've been to all 48 states. So that means that this was right before Philly. This is actually before I hit Patterson. Then after Patterson, Philly, I'm back home. So that's what led me here. I did a whole, what, 47 other states. 46, 47 other states before I decided to do this, you know? So that goes to show you. But um, as far as comparison, it's like most big cities. It's like LA, it's like Miami, Philly, Baltimore, um, Chicago, that type of ambience, you know? This is actually a little bit extra on overload because there's over 9 million people that, that call this place home. Philly, we got like 1.5 million. We got 1.5 million. Chicago got what? Over 2 million, 2.5 2 million. You know what I mean? Um, this, there's an overabundance of, of energy. The energy is real. Yo, it's raining guys. And I think I already gave y'all six minutes or so over my traditional uh, time frame. I try to keep these tours at one hour long, but I gave y'all a little bit extra. I kept walking because I know that me talking about my buddy some of y'all don't even care about they're like tune why don't you just focus on the tour but nah if i gotta repeat that again for another 10 tours i'll repeat it again you know because 
that's my story but i know a lot of you already know the story you're probably tired of hearing it <laughs> that's why i feel guilty every time i talk about it. like man stop talking about it too the original ogs of the channel don't even care but that's what makes me who i am today and that's what brought me here to travel in the country because if he would have never died i would have probably never stopped shooting under i would guarantee never stopped shooting under my original music video alias and i wouldn't have went as full-fledged with the touring because i was doing you know a variety of content from skits to music videos to unboxings to to uh documentaries all types of stuff Sorry guys, I just stood quiet because the chain loud. Yeah, so I was doing all types of stuff and then when he passed away, I just, I ain't care about that music video stuff. Now, I think I could uh, progress in his name, you know what I mean? Progress in his honor. With that being said, y'all, we well over the time limit. It's raining, my camera device is wet, my gimbal's wet, I'm looking at it, it's wet. Hope you guys enjoyed this little short walkthrough the Bronx we didn't cover all of the Bronx there's no way I could walk the entire Bronx in one hour <laughs> but um hope you guys enjoyed the experience sorry about the small talk it was fun you know what I mean stay tuned make sure you turn on that notification bell because if not you're not gonna get notified whenever a new video is released on this channel and you won't get notified right oh uh, check it out there goes that big pump mural yo Yo, the girl over there is fighting. Hold on, what is this? What is this? She just slammed the door. Oh, snap. Yo, they over there mad. Yo, the girl in the blue is ramming. She slammed the heck out of her door. Yo, they was about to start rumbling. The girl from New Jersey. They both from New Jersey, yo. They was about to start rumbling, bro. That gray car, the Mitsubishi, I don't know if they crashed into the blue one, that blue Accord, but she was mad hype. <laughs> she was mad hype. Yeah, that rain coming down, y'all. I'm starting to get wet. I only got a t-shirt and some ball shorts on. <laughs>